Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I want to give you a quick demonstration and then an explanation about the nature of charges in electric fields. And here I have a cathode ray tube connected to an induction coil. And that induction coil allows me to apply a large voltage across these two terminals. My cathode over here and my anode over here. Let's see what happens when I switch it on. You'll see a green beam. And that green beam is a beam of electrons it's leaving the cathode over here and accelerating through towards the anode on the other side. And the question is, why does it do that? Now, I'll switch it off for the moment. And one of the reasons I'll switch it off is, is that uh, this produces a, a small level of x-rays. And so I'm trying to reduce my exposure to x-rays. In a moment, I'm going to switch on this induction coil, which is going to apply a voltage across in the vertical direction as my electron beam goes across. And what's going to happen? Let's have a watch. So a nice straight beam. You'll notice it deflects. Now, it does fluctuate a bit, and that's because of the nature of the induction coil. It's sort of switching on and off to produce the high voltages that I require, and causing it to fluctuate a little bit. But you'll notice that it definitely is being uh, deflected in a particular direction. Let's change the direction of my polarity. So now the polarity is in the opposite direction. Let's see what happens. This time, it deflected in the opposite direction. Why did that happen? Let's find out. So here we have two plates and we set them up with a potential difference, which is V. What happens between these two plates? Well, you're going to set up an electric field between those two plates. That's going to look something like this. We're going to separate them by a certain distance like so, then we're going to have a uniform electric field. And within this electric field, we're going to be placing a elementary charge. So in this case, I'm going to use a positive charge. What's going to happen to this elementary charge? Now, if it's fixed like this, it's going to experience a force. Therefore, it's going to accelerate. And of course, the direction of the electric field lines suggests that it will start to move in a downward direction. So let's have a look at the relationship between a number of those things we've mentioned. So we've mentioned the electric field and we've ex mentioned, of course, that this guy experiences a force in the downward direction. Let's see if we can tie all of these things together. Well, the first thing to remember is, is that the electric field is set up by applying a voltage over a certain distance. The second thing is that the electric field is defined by the force per unit charge. So if we combine those two things, we can see that the force is equal to VQ over D. Now, once you've established that force, you can of course determine also the acceleration by Newton's second law. That is, that the acceleration of my particle is going to be simply equal to the force we've just discussed, divided by the mass of this particle. So now let's also talk about work. You may remember that work is done when you apply a force over a certain displacement. In other words, work is equal to force multiplied by the distance. And of course, the unit for that is in joules. So the work done is actually a measurement of the energy. Now, if we work out the force by using this formula here, you can see that the work done is equal to just simply VQ. How? Because VQ over D is my force. We multiply it by the D, which is the distance here, and we simply get VQ. Now, if we rearrange this, you can see that the voltage is equal to the work done per Q. And now we've come full circle. I have a video which discusses voltage and the definition of voltage is amount of work done or energy per unit charge. So we've come full circle here in the relationship between all of these variables. Now, if we have 
of course, work or energy or work done, we know that can lead to one of two things. If we were to apply a force in the opposite direction to counteract the force of attraction towards the negative plate down here, then we are doing work against the field and so we are increasing its potential energy. So the work done can result in a change in potential energy and this is a symbol for potential energy. But it could also, to simply release it, it's going to accelerate, which means its velocity is going to increase. We're getting an increase in kinetic energy. In this case, the work is done on the charge by the field, not against the field. And so what we have is that the work done ends up being an e change in kinetic energy. And of course, the formula for kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. So if you know the voltage and you know the separation of the two plates, you know the charge on the particle on the mass, you can establish various things, not only to the work and the force, but also the velocity of the charge as it moves in that field. So let's have a look at a mathematical situation where we could apply all of those things. And so here I have a, a heating coil and that is going to cause an electron that is going to be released from this plate and then it's going to accelerate. Now in many cathode ray tubes, what you have here is two plates where this is the anode because this is my positively charged plate and this is my negatively charged plate. And we have what we, a situation where we can cause this electron to leave the negatively charged plate and accelerate and then through an opening in my positive charge plate to pass through the plate. And we, in, in essence, are speeding up my charge. But how can we use this setup to determine how fast it leaves this hole? Well, let's have a look at some numbers. So let's set up this situation where we have 2000 volts sitting across these plates. The second thing we need to know is the separation and we're going to separate this by one centimeter across. What is the velocity of my el electron as it passes through the hole? So I want to encourage a, a thinking process on how you solve this problem. So we want the velocity. So you think, okay, I need the velocity. If I need the velocity, then I can determine that from the kinetic energy. But hold on, my kinetic energy is related to the amount of work done. And of course, work, I need to know the force that is applied as well as the distance. I now know the processes that I need to have in order to work this out. And I'm going to do it this the long way initially, because you can do it a short way. Well, the electric field is equal to the voltage divided by the distance. And so we have 2000 volts over a distance of one centimeter, which is 0 0.01 meters. And so our electric field strength as 200,000 volts per meter or newtons per coulomb, which is the other alternate unit for electric field. I now can work out the force. And because I'm talking about an electron, the force is equal to EQ. And so E we established was already two by 10 to the power of five. And I multiplied by the charge on the electron, which is 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. And I get 3.2 by 10 to the power of negative 14 newtons. The next thing I need to do is to work out the work done. The work is the force multiplied by the distance that the electron travels. And so we get 3.2 by 10 to the power of negative 14 multiplied by 0 0.01. And we get 3.2 by 10 to the power of negative 16 joules. So it's the amount of energy that this charge gains. So the kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared, is equal to the value of the work done that we just discussed. If I then substitute in for mass, which is the mass of an electron, then we get the velocity squared is equal to two times 3.2 by 10 to the power of negative 16 divided by the mass of the electron. And we're just going to round it to 9.1 by 10 to the power of negative 31. When we calculate that out, we get a value for velocity of 2.57 by 10 to the power of seven meters per second. Now I've gone here the long way 
to work out all these things. If you remember, I mentioned that the work done is simply equal to the voltage multiplied by the charge. And if that means I can get to the same value by simply multiplying my voltage, which is 2000 multiplied by my charge, which is 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19, and I'll get the same value. So that's how you work out the velocity of the charge as it passes through the electric field. Now let's re-examine this question. But the issue we have practically is that a particle between two electric fields generally can't be placed in a fixed position. So it simply accelerates towards the other side. No, what we end up doing is we end up firing my charged particle through the field. In other words, it has a certain velocity in, let's say, in the horizontal direction. But the processes are still the same. Now, what sort of motion will this particle exhibit as it passes through the field? So again, thinking processes here, our velocity in the horizontal direction is constant. However, in the vertical direction, my velocity will be changing. In other words, it will be increasing at a constant rate. Again, why is that? Well, because we are experiencing a force. That force, of course, is constant. And that will mean we have an acceleration, which is also constant. And in terms of my charge here, if this is a little positive charge, that acceleration will be in the downward direction. So what type of motion is where we have two motions that are perpendicular to each other, where one is experiencing constant acceleration and the other one is experiencing no acceleration, that is the velocity is constant. Well, that of course is projectile motion. This will curve with a lovely parabola. So projectile motions is not simply something in the domain of gravitational fields. Projectile motion is any case where you have acceleration in one direction and no acceleration at 90 degrees to that as long as the acceleration is a constant value, which it is in this case. Let's now look at this situation with some numbers. So let's apply a voltage across these plates and we're going to make this 1000 volts. And then we're going to separate this by a distance of one centimeter between the plates. And my velocity at which it enters the field is going to be equal to 2 by 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. The question I have is how far through the field will it enter before it strikes the plate? In other words, what I'm really asking is what is the range of my particle as it enters the field? Now, again, our thinking processes need to go into place here. I need to know the range. Therefore, if I'm needing to know the acceleration for a projectile motion, I need to know the force. How do I work out the force? I need to know the electric field. How do I own electric field? Because I have a voltage of a certain displacement. So let's start the process off. And I'm going to start over here with the, the values in determining the acceleration. Well, the voltage is equal to ED. And so therefore E, is equal to 1000 divided by 0.01 and we get a value of 1 by 10 to the power of 5 volts per meter. The force that I experience is going to be equal to EQ and that's going to be equal to 10 to the power of 5 multiplied by the charge. Now the charge of a single proton is 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. We get 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 14 newtons. Of course, the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. And so we have our 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 14. And we divide that by the mass. Now, this is the mass of a proton. And the mass of a proton is 1.67 by 10 to the power of negative 27. So now we have a value for acceleration and that value is 9.58 by 10 to the power of 12 meters per second squared. Now this becomes just a simple projectile motion problem. You're simply assuming, of course, that we are starting from a higher position. The total distance that it moves down is this plate separation. 
then you can work out the time in the vertical and then use that horizontal. Now I'm not going to do that for you, but if you work out the value for the range R of X, you should get a value of 0.91 meters or 90 centimeters through the plate. If the plate, of course, is longer than that particular distance. Now imagine the problem was reversed. In other words, you were given the range of the particle, and let's say you were given the velocity as it enters the field, and you were to determine the voltage. What well, would be the thinking process that you need to have to go through this? Well, you say, well, hold on, I know the range, so I can probably use my projectile motion problems to work out the acceleration. Now, once I determine the acceleration, and let's say I'm given the mass of my particle, I can then work out the force of my particle. Now, if I have the force of the particle, I can therefore work out the electric field that the particle is entering. And then finally, of course, I can work out the voltage across the plates. So that's the sort of thinking process you might have to apply if the question was, let's say, inverted. Now, I hope that has helped you understand how charged particles move through electric fields. Well, I hope that helps you understand the concepts. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.